Oh, Shelton, we've been out here since four o'clock this morning and I've been watching police taking pictures and gathering any evidence they could find in front of this home. Well, I was the only reporter to get close within the fire zone. Take a look at the damage inside the home. It is very extensive. This is the wall that the officer crashed into. You can see there's a whole bunch of these rocks all over this yard. And then just a couple of feet over there, an SUV crashed into the same wall, causing the same amount of damage. Well, this SUV doesn't have a backup camera, but if it did, the screen would be located on the center console. Check this out, it's not every day we get to be this close to a scene. Everything inside is burned down. Search crews are trying to find this wide area of debris in the middle of the ocean. If you look down here, you'll notice that these uh, bricks are actually covered in ice from the water that froze overnight. The baseball stadium is much quieter than it was last night for sure. And many fans stayed up past 11 last night to watch the last inning of the game. Well, we are on Sun Valley east of US 54 and I'm told that that a fire marshal has just arrived on the scene to help assist. We have a large group gathering behind us. They're actually getting ready to start the trail this morning. We're actually taking a little break from the Black Friday madness here at Cielo Vista Mall, but by the looks of it, I think I'm doing a little bit better than some of these other people. The trial is set to start next week for a man accused of killing an El Paso police officer while driving drunk. As KFOX 14 has reported, Alejandro Fierro is accused of running a red light and slamming into the side of an El Paso police car. And while new home sales are going up in East El Paso, the same isn't necessarily true for the apartment market. KFOX 14 News at 9, Stacy Welsh tells us why some may decide to buy rather than rent. Morning News reporter Ruben Velos live at the scene, which is close by Waco Elementary School. And Ruben, I understand that investigators initially are looking in the area around the garage, correct? That's right, Shelton. The investigators believe that the fire may have started in the garage, but that is still uh, under investigation. This is a live scene of that house uh, right now. At least four people lived in that home, I'm being told by uh, officers at the scene, a mother, a father, and their two kids. Uh, thankfully, they were able to get out safe. I'm being told that someone in the house smelled smoke early this morning and was able to warn their family members and get out of the house before the whole house was engulfed in flames. Hey, Fox 14 Morning News reporter Ruben Velos, the only reporter there at the scene, now live from East El Paso. Ruben? Well, officers are talking to witnesses right now. They have the area north of Edgemere and Saigon blocked off. This stabbing happened just before 5 this morning near Edgemere Elementary School. Investigators are still trying to find out what led to the stabbing, but they say that the victim was stabbed several times and rushed to Del Sol with serious injuries. Now, the school hasn't been affected, but earlier we did see officers with flashlights searching the area high and low for the suspect. Investigators haven't said if the suspect is a man or a woman. However, they believe that the suspect may have fled on foot. And, and parents should be able to drop off their kids this morning. We're going to be live throughout the morning with another update for you at 7 o'clock. For now, reporting live in East El Paso, Ruben Velos, the KFOX 14 Morning News. Crews are making their last minute preparations here at Southwest University Park. You can see behind me that there are still some workers making those last minute preparations. This stadium has been quoted as one of the best facilities in Triple A baseball, but not every El Pasoan was excited about this project, including a few city representatives. April 14th, 2013, a day that would change the downtown El Paso landscape forever. El Paso's 30-year-old city hall was demolished to make way for the new AAA baseball stadium. But everything started back in June 2012 when Mountain Star Sports Group announced plans to bring AAA baseball team to El Paso. But not everyone was excited about the plan, including current city representative Eddie Holguin. Well, it doesn't surprise me. Obviously, council had decided to shift this down the throats of the citizens of El Paso. But in September of 2012, the El Paso City Council voted 4-3 to sign with Mountain Star Sports Group and build the new baseball stadium. 
after the demolition of City Hall, work quickly began to clear up the debris for the official groundbreaking on May 30th of last year. This time-lapse video shows how fast crews worked to move dirt, pour concrete and put up the steel beams on October 22, 2013. El Paso, Chihuahuas! The team's name is finally announced. I thought it'd be a good mascot for my children. And also we live in the Chihuahuan Desert, so I thought it kind of like checked all the boxes. But not everyone was excited about the name. I don't like it. I'm surprised they went with that name. But the name would quickly grow on El Pasoans as merchandise sold quickly. Despite Mount Star Sports Group having to delay the opening day three weeks after its original opening date, El Pasoans excitedly awaited the upcoming game day at the new stadium, which was soon officially named Southwest University Park. And the Chihuahuas will be playing tonight against the Fresno Grizzlies at 7 p.m. The game is sold out, but I checked online and this morning, and there are still tickets available for the rest of the season. For now, reporting live in downtown El Paso, Ruben Velos, the KFOX 14 Morning News. Well, neighbors tell me it rained so much last night that this street looked like a river. It even turned this neighbor's yard into a lake. Lightning fills a cloudy night sky. Thunder can be heard for miles. Monsoon rain floods parts of Mesa Street in West El Paso last night, but some of the hardest hit areas were in southern New Mexico. This Perino family had to borrow a pump after their yard was flooded with nearly two feet of water. Most of the rest of the water does go down this street and it gets pretty much all these houses right here. Tristan Arroyo and his mother live in this mobile home. He says the water in their yard was up to their knees. Uh, my dog was pretty much in the water. So I had to go take them out. The National Weather Service says some areas in the Mesilla Valley were hit with more than two inches of water. And along with such torrential downpours, Tristan's mother says flooding is a big problem in the area. You know, the county needs to do something because we have even the, they built a dam coming into Berino. You know, you can see there's a dam on your left side and that didn't work. But the Arroyos were some of the lucky ones. This mobile home park got so much rain, this car is actually buried in two feet of mud. Vado, which is prone to flooding, was once again no match for the flash floods. It's not known if anyone is hurt, but Doñana County officials say 24 people had to be evacuated last night because of flooding. And back out here live in Berino, people in this area tell me the hardest part now is having to deal with all the mud, especially in some of the unpaved roads. And if you happen to drive into a flooded wash or flooded street, emergency officials say it's better to turn around to avoid getting drowned. Reporting live in Berino, Ruben Velos, the KFOX 14 Morning News. More people are getting plastic surgery and some of them are blaming this trend on social media. That's right. Doctors say an increasing number of people are getting plastic surgery just so they can look good on, of all things, Facebook. KFOX 14 Morning News reporter Ruben Velos is in West El Paso this morning with a look at just how far some people are willing to go. Ruben? Well, good morning. I spoke with one El Pasoan this morning who tells me he was just 16 years old when he got his first procedure and says he doesn't regret it one bit. Any little fine lines you have under your eyes is just going to make you look older in pictures. Like Jason no Silva cares a lot about his image. He tells me he spent more than $36,000 on cosmetic procedures, including skin bleaching. Well, uh, some work done in the nose, in the chin, and some augmentation, uh, I mean reduction on the jaw. Jason is among the growing number of people in the borderland who are getting plastic surgery in order to look good when taking a selfie. Any light that I do, I really like how I come out. According to a national survey, more and more young adults are going under the knife to look better in pictures. It kind of is like an addiction. It's like getting a tattoo. You just keep wanting uh, more and more and more. Dr. Sadri Solzer from El Paso Cosmetic Surgery says he's definitely seen an increase in young patients getting cosmetic procedures in his office, but warns it's a decision that shouldn't be taken lightly. I don't think uh, having surgery just look for, look, to look like somebody else is the right thing. And most plastic surgeons, they won't do that. Dr. Soldier says doctors must evaluate the patient heavily before a procedure. If not, patients may not have the desired outcome of their appearance. They will have that procedure. They will have a horrendous outcome. 
they will be depressed or they can get even suicidal. Jason admits his parents aren't very accepting of his decision to change his appearance. I think they feel concerned as to why do so many things. But says he's very pleased with the way he looks. Now that I had gotten all these things and now that it's very popular, then I, I guess I just use it to my advantage. And despite more people getting facial surgery to look better, breast augmentation still remains the number one procedure here in El Paso. And any of these surgeries can range from $3,000 or more. Reporting live in West El Paso, Ruben Veloz, the KFOX 14 Morning News.